very warm welcome to our conversation, Precious Waste, which is part of um, a series of conversations um, called Sustainable Together. And they are live streamed by the Goethe Institute South Africa based in Johannesburg. And this is a new, this is actually the launch. It's a new series of conversations around the topic of sustainability. And with this regional project, we aim to support civil society initiatives that give greater visibility to sustainability and make effective contributions to improving the local environment. We are very happy and glad and proud that we can start this series of conversations around the topic of waste, waste management, and the reclaimers um, that are that we all know that are working hard in the city of Johannesburg every day to support us and to support the city of Johannesburg to make this, um, the urban space a bit more livable. We are very happy tonight to speak with Luyanda Tlachwaya, who is part of the African Reclaimers Organization. And he will talk to Dr. Melanie Sampson from Wits University. And our, our conversation tonight is moderated by Tanya Zak, who is um, a writer. For example, she is the author of the series of publications, Wake Up, This is Joburg, that you might all know. I'm uh, very happy to welcome all of you. My name is Nadine Siegert. I'm the head of culture and development a department at the Goethe Institute in Johannesburg, and I'm very much looking forward to this conversation tonight. You're warmly welcome to post your comments, your questions, and also your critique into the Facebook comments, and we will later have the opportunity to give these questions to our speakers. Enjoy this evening, and we are looking forward to engage with you later in our questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine, and good evening, everyone. Um, as we know, reclaimers play a huge and a very visible role in collecting waste across Johannesburg. And for many of us, putting out our recyclable waste on our sidewalk each week is probably one of the only conscious acts we make to mitigate the damage that we do to our environment on our daily, in our daily lives. Could you be doing better in, in, in this one really important act. Um, there is a pilot project in Johannesburg that is testing that. It is developing ideas about what might be done better with, in waste reclaiming and what might be rolled out, in what could possibly be rolled out in every neighborhood in Johannesburg. Behind that grounded work is an important partnership between Wits University, the African Reclaimers Organization, Unilever and other stakeholders who have done in-depth research and are influencing government approaches. They're also tackling on the ground solutions with this pilot that is testing how to provide reclaimers with support and resources for the services they provide in our neighborhoods. Luyanda Lachwayo of the African Reclaimers Organization and Dr. Melanie Sampson of its university are working on the pilot and have been working on national and local policy around reclaiming. This evening, we're talking with them about the economic imperatives of doing things differently and the systems and the politics that impact on the informal system of reclaiming in Johannesburg. We're also going to talk about the impact of COVID on the livelihood of reclaimers and about the Auckland Park Brixton pilot project and about the scalability of such programs across the city. As Nadine has said, please do send your questions and comments in the chat and we will pose those to our guests later in the conversation. So welcome again, Luyanda and Melanie. And Luyanda, you represent the African Reclaimers Organization. You are a reclaimer yourself. Um, reclaimers have been working for many years in, in Johannesburg. How would you describe the system they've developed and, and the impact that it has on our environment? Thank you, thank you very much, Tanya, for having me. Um, reclaimers um, have, have, have had a very huge but invisible impact um, through the eyes of society. Um, when I joined, I, I had a stigma of, 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 of those who have been with me by mechanisms. Um, Luyanda, Luyanda, I'm sorry, may I, could I ask you to talk closer to the mic? That might help us. 
bring the mic closer it, to your mouth? Can you hear me much better now? It's much better if you could hold it there. Thank you. Sorry, could you start again? Thank you, thank you very much, Tanya. Um, reclaimers in South Africa have, have, have really made a huge but invisible impact on, 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 on the eyes of society, as I was saying. Um, but a huge, a huge subsidy towards the environment and, 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 and the municipalities at large. Um, on the physical part of it, reclaimers have contributed, their bodies have contributed their times and at, at, at most of the time did not even understand the value that we had not only on the environment but on on on, on the on, on the politics and the economic side of it and it's only now that we are understanding that the the, the, the small cardboard or the small plastic that we pick up has a very huge influence and we are only a small portion of it that we are recognized um, which is the reason why that African Reclaimers Organization has always run with the mandate of finding ways of recognizing the work that the informal waste collectors are doing. Um, CSIR took out statistics in 2014 saying that we, we saved that the environment about 750 million rands worth of landfill space. I think that is when we actually woke up and said, we are doing a lot. Um, so, so the first part of it was for us to actually understand the importance of the work that we do for us to understand the, the, the impacts that we have on, on, in, in South Africa. That is when we, we, we started having information from your CSIR, started having engagements with people that can be able to show us the value that we have. But in South Africa, without reclaimers, the, the waste management system would definitely collapse. An average reclaimer can collect about 70 to 250 kilograms of waste a day. You multiply it by 90,000 reclaimers. That is a lot of waste that is being redirected from going to the landfills. 90,000 reclaimers? That is, is that an estimation that we have. Um, in, in the city of Johannesburg, um, the reclaimers that we have is close to 9,000. And that is not, we haven't even actually done a proper registration. That is only from the arrow side of it. Uh, but there's a lot of people that are, are, are moving from any form of work that are being retrenched or uh, the, the, the problem of COVID right now a lot of people have lost employment and have directly moved in, in, in into the informal sector so it's constantly growing um yeah. on a daily basis the mining sector can lose people everyone comes into the recycling industry and immediately it moves out a lot of material out of the landfills and 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 there's, you know, a lot of people talk about numbers. This is how much South Africa is doing in terms of collection rates. But it's as if no one knows how it gets there. There's a lot of labor that goes in there that is not being recognized as labor in South Africa. Sure, sure. But Melanie, you've looked at these issues around recognition um, and, and, and more and, and the impacts on, on the economy and proposals for um, an alternative economy. Um, um, you've worked with the reclaim organizations on national and local government policy on waste picker integration. What is waste picker integration and, and why is it necessary, Melanie? So thank, thanks, Tanya. So when people hear the words or the term waste picker integration, I think what they usually think of is taking individual reclaimers and making their work a little bit better, bringing them into a formal system that government is creating. However, you know, I think what you've heard from Luyanda is that reclaimers are the backbone of the recycling economy in South Africa. Um, long before government became interested in recycling, uh, reclaimers established what I call a separation outside source system where we're too lazy to separate our materials so they separate it for us and through the labor that they perform in their separation outside source service um, as Leanda mentioned they save municipalities up to 750 million rand a year in landfill airspace alone and they are responsible for collecting 80 to 90 percent of the used recyclable material uh, that is collected for recycling in the country giving South Africa recycling rates that are comparable to many European countries for some products. So when we talk about waste picker integration in South Africa, what it really excites me is that when we were developing the national guideline on waste picker integration, all of the parties in the sector agreed 
that integration in South Africa means developing official systems that integrate with the existing informal separation outside source system and building from what exists. So what we're doing is we're, we're saying we can't adopt these models from Europe and America. We need to build a, a, locally, um, a locally appropriate recycling system that integrates the formal economy and formal policy with uh, what has already been established informally. And I just want to note that integration isn't just about the economic aspect and the labor, because for many, many decades, reclaimers in South Africa and around the world, they've been criminalized, stigmatized, harassed, excluded. Um, and so reclaimer integration also means the integration of reclaimers socially, politically, economically, culturally, and I think Arrow's doing really fantastic work. Um, all of those other aspects of integration as well. And so this became a really important issue very recently around, around COVID, um, where Luyanda, there was a concern that reclaimers were overlooked by government's approach to lockdown. Um, and, and that they were not considered an essential service, and it, and it was a struggle to, to, to change that, that view. How were reclaimers affected um, by lockdown and, and, and in the COVID period also by the disease? And, and how have they responded to, to the state's lockdown regulations um, and, and also to, to the effect on their livelihood? Leander? Thank you, Akinjay. Um, the first thing I need to highlight is that um, 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 COVID is the first pandemic is not the first pandemic to to, to affect reclaimers. Um, I've, I've always been making an example saying reclaimers have been asking for, 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 for protective gear for the past five years. We've been asking for masks for the past five years because we understand the dangers of the work that we do. People don't separate the materials. There's a lot of things that you find in the bin. Um, you, you get medical waste get a lot of, we had a problem of the storages in a couple of years back. It was not a pandemic because it was not affecting everyone else, but it was a pandemic to us. Now Sorry, what was the pandemic? In, in yeah. Sorry, I, sorry, I didn't hear that. What was the, what did you say you had a couple of years ago? Sorry. Um, we, we, had, we had a problem of, 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 of a Lestoris' outbreak. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. It, it had a very huge impact on the reclaimers. Um, it was a health hazard. And it, it wasn't much of a hazard to, 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 to society, if I were to say, but we, we, we actually built systems and built ways of how to fight back. Um, so we, we knew how to get to, to, to fight a pandemic, but we didn't know that it was going to affect everyone. Now that it's affecting everyone, um, um, reclaimers are becoming the limelight. We've been complaining about these resources for a very long time. It's not just about COVID. It's about proper recognition of the work that we are doing. COVID just came in and highlighted the problems that we have been having for over 20 years. The problems of, of masks, it's, it's a 100% it's a, it's, it's a need for a reclaimer on a daily basis, post-COVID. Um, we, we had to find ways of recognizing ourselves and making things possible for ourselves because government was, was coming with policies of support structures, of support relief for, 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 for South Africans. Whilst in, in South Africa, 80% of, of, of the waste pickers that may say the reclaimers are not South Africans. Some of them are not documented. So if, if you're gonna cater for a, a small percentage that have IT documents, that you're not, you're not looking at the, the entire collection system. You're not looking at the whole labor system. It, it, it's cherry picking. On, 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 on certain people, which we saw as a very big problem because when, when, when all these numbers come out of saying we're saving the, the municipality 750 million rands, they're not talking about ID documents, we're talking about labor. And that, that, that is one of the problems that we Beyond the African Reclaimers Organization um, responded with its own programs to support reclaimers. What, what did they do? I think the first thing, the, the first thing that we, we, we did is, is, is find ways of, 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 of providing um, um, relief, food relief. Um, the second thing that we had is to pilot, um, escalate the pilots that we had already started. Um, for example, we, we, we had a, a, a pilot of centralizing resources, centralizing reclaimers into one space and be able to find resources of getting materials directly to them. 
which helps them firstly from traveling the, the, the long distances that they normally travel and and and, and it, it, it helps even escalate the materials that we are we actually collecting so when COVID started we initially uh, put a way forward on all those projects and we find where when municipalities couldn't reach during COVID we're able to reach we're able to supply materials directly to the reclaimers find ways of sanitizing the materials then they can separate it unfortunately um, I can say 70% of the materials right now don't have value. But with the 30% that we're able to sell, people were able to continue and be able to make a living and be safe and not go out and work and be able to be in their space to be sanitized but continue doing their work and be able to go sell and still earn a living. Right. Um, Melanie, Leander has mentioned the complication around compensation for, for reclaimers for the actual service that they provide. Um, also, that non-South Africans are often excluded from local policy approaches or, or strategies. Could you tell us some more about, the, but you've talked about a, a, a state that seems committed to, to a new and progressive way of, of integrating waste picking. You know, what's, what's happening here? And particularly in, our, with our, in, our, in the case of Johannesburg, our local municipality, what is, what is their waste reclaiming approach and how does it differ from or connect with this separation outside source that, that, that you've been describing? Um, you know, what, what could be done about the kind of complications that, that Leander is raising um, a, a, around working with the municipal process? Um, well, wow, that, was, that was a great cluster of questions. So I'll start with the ones I remember and then you may have to repeat some of them. Um, so I think uh, when you ask, you've noted that there's this you know, tremendous support now from, from government. This is something that is very new and it has really emerged over the past few years as all of the parties in the sector have been coming together to focus on developing this guideline on uh, what they call waste picker integration in South Africa. Unfortunately, before that, um, you know, reclaimers weren't really mentioned in any national policies or legislation in meaningful ways. And certainly in Johannesburg, as in municipalities across the country, the approach was not to welcome reclaimers, it was actually to focus on how to er eradicate them and eliminate them. And so what we're seeing is a sh there can be a shift at a national level, but it takes quite a while for that to filter down. And unfortunately in Johannesburg, the research that my students and I have conducted has shown that the Johannesburg has led the way in a sense because they've tried to work with reclaimers, but the model they, they adopted is what I call a charity approach where they frame reclaimers as these poor marginal people who need to be assisted and that professionals and officials need to decide how they should be integrated. And of course, reclaimers are the experts on cycling in the country. They're also the experts on their, their own needs. And you know, as, um, as uh, some international organizations have noted, they are the only people who understand how recycling can work in a city in South, Af in South Africa or in the developing world. And so what we have seen is that the policies that are still in place in Johannesburg, for example, instead of working with reclaimers and strengthening their separation outside source system, uh, Johannesburg and Pick It Up have been giving multi, multi-million rand contracts to private companies to come in and collect the very materials that reclaimers have been collecting for so many years. And, um, you know, this has led to dramatic decreases in income, tremendous economic hardship, and uh, does not necessarily increase the recycling rate. In fact, the recycling rates that the city records are completely uh, out of sync with reality because they're not capturing the materials that reclaimers collect. And some of the information we've gathered through our pilot project shows that in four months, if our estimates are, if we, if our figures are correct and we extrapolate uh, to the full population of reclaimers in Johannesburg, Reclaimers in Johannesburg are meeting Pick It Up's annual targets for collecting recyclables that it misses every single year. They are collecting that in just four months. And so I think there have been some new connections between the municipality and Arrow, and I really want to encourage those to continue because we have a very locally appropriate solution that needs to be explored. That's, that's an extraordinary statistic. Um, 
on, on how reclaimers are, 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 leading, are leading the way. Could we go on to this, the, the, the example, the, the pilot that you talked about? Leander, could you introduce us to, it's an Auckland Park Brixton pilot, right? Could you, could you tell us about that, please? Yes, yes. Um, I think the, the, the pilot started with um, a, a, a mere uh, um, simple relationship where reclaimers came and we started doing a training campaign in Brixton and Auckland Park. Um, and then we had a uh, 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 um, stakeholder, uh, Unilever, who was very supportive and came in and wanted to know exactly what we needed. And what we really needed at the time was uh, a proof that of, of the work we do and, 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 and be able to have a baseline study on it and have research on it. And we really thought it would be a very good investment to start and work with communities on an integrative processes. Of, 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 of making reclaimers work much better. Um, Unilever came in and paid in a, a, a top-up fee. Um, a top-up fee meaning that um, whatever kilos that, that, that um, the reclaimer collects from Brixton and Auckland Park on the day, they would be able to find, they would go to a weighing station, weigh their materials, and get paid 50 cents per kilo on the materials that they've collected. So for an example, if, if a reclaimer collects 300 kilograms of, of materials, um, then we get 150 rand for, for, for that. It's not selling the material, it's being paid for the service that they've provided. What it has done, it has changed perceptions on what, who and what reclaimers are. It has changed uh, 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 the approach between the, the, the residents and the reclaimers. Re the residents are starting to separate the materials. Um, that's a strange thing. Uh, uh, it has created a link of, of connection of saying, this is what I need. This is, this is how you separate the materials. This is, we are now going through a process of this is not recyclable. What do we do with it? How do we dispose of this? So it's, it's an inclusive system that would be able to help the reclaimers. From firstly, I, I don't need to go through a bid. So there's no need for me to be wearing a paraclava because the first thing that was, the main reason why I was wearing a paraclava So, Yanda, we've, we've, we've lost you. Melanie, while we're getting connection, uh, improved connection with, with Leander, could you tell us how this um, program was, was set up in, mm. in the neighborhood and what the roles are of the, of the different stakeholders? Sure. So, um, this, this pilot project we're doing is uh, based on a model from Bogota, Colombia. Um, which was very inspiring for us uh, because what they did in Bogota uh, after the reclaimers there won, I think, six constitutional court cases forcing the municipality to pay them for their service. Uh, what they set up in Bogota was uh, when reclaimers would collect materials, they would weigh them and get paid a, an amount per kilogram as their service fee. They then go on to sell the materials and then they also earn those the you know, the income from selling, from sale. Now, in South Africa, this really excited us because government's model um, and municipalities' models have been to integrate reclaimers through cooperatives. All of the programs focus on forcing reclaimers to form cooperatives. Um, but, you know, Linda Godfrey from CSIR's research has shown, and her colleagues have shown, that 92% of cooperatives in the waste sector in South Africa fail. And we've known this for many years, and yet municipalities still keep insisting reclaimers must form cooperatives. So in the national process to develop the guideline, we identified the need to develop a system through which we could pay individual reclaimers. And so that's why we've taken that Bogota model and um, as Luyanda was explaining, when reclaimers collect the materials in Brixton and Auckland Park, then they're weighed and then they get paid their service fee and then they continue to go and, and sell. And in terms of what people's roles are, I, I wanna highlight, you know, recycling is, is a social relationship. And I think you noted in the very beginning um, that we do our tiny little bit or not, right? Uh, putting recyclables out in the trash or setting them aside. Uh, but it's reclaimers who perform the embodied labor of moving, of processing that material, of sorting it, of cleaning it, of categorizing it, of, of selling it, so that it enters the recycling, um, the recycling stream. And what we've done in this project is we've said, we're not gonna wait for the municipality. We're still engaging the municipality. We're gathering data to show the municipality, 
but we are working on those social relations. So the core of the program has been developing relationships between Arrow and the reclaimers who are working in the area and the residents who live in the area so that they are voluntarily collaborating. And I think that for me has, is what's so exciting about this process. And I should note, it's not only happening in Brixton and Auckland Park. That's where we have some funding to pay the service fee. Um, but you know, in a, in a neighborhood called Bordeaux, uh, there's been a remarkable collaboration between Arrow and the residents uh, that's been continuing, I think, for more for more than a well more than a year now. And many other neighborhoods are interested. And and I think what we've seen is that throughout the the lockdown, recently, residents have increasingly realized the important role of reclaimers, and more and more residents in different areas have been approaching Arrow to roll out the program to that area, to their to those other areas. So if a residents association or a group of residents contact Arrow, Yanda, um, to, to, to initiate a program like this, what, what, what is that process or what, what is involved? It, 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 involves, it involves engagement. I think that's the first most important thing. Um, the first thing that you need to do is engage with the reclaimer that comes and collects materials from, from your house almost every single week. Um, engaging on what he needs to collect, engaging on what 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 time does he come through to collect, um, well, what doesn't he collect, um, what Arrow actually does is be able to create that that that, that relationship of, of of who is this person and who is the resident, and finding systems. Because what we've seen in Johannesburg that what happens in Newtown it may not necessarily happen in Bordeaux or happen in Dunbury. You need to engage with the residents and engage with the reclaimers to be able to create a proper working platform. You're finding in other neighborhoods where even security companies are starting to give reclaimers a walkie talkies for security uh, purposes during the day because they've seen the problem of crime in the area and the people that are able to see all the things that are happening are the reclaimers. So you're seeing this 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 connection that happens. So it happens within the different neighborhoods. That the baseline that we did in Brixton and Ogden Park was just a, a, a skeleton that we were able to say it can be able to work in each and every neighborhood, depending on how how much we integrate each and every person within the neighborhood. So it's so as Melanie was saying, it's not a charity approach. This is not only about the needs of the reclaimer and, 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 and sort of a handout approach, but it's really about a relationship because it's also about what are the neighborhood issues or the street level issues in that neighborhood that the reclaimers might become involved in, such as, such as surveillance. Um, can we check with you, Nadine, are there any questions from, from the, the people who are listening in to the, to the program? Yes, thank you. There are actually a lot of comments and some questions as well. A lot of people um, say they really um, enjoy the conversation and they learned a lot. So let me just quickly check. Um, there were some questions related to um, what can actually be done by, by private households. So maybe we can also look into that again. Um, let me... Um, read out the question, for example, um, Deirdre Marres was asking, how can we help the informal reclaimers? Um, how can we get our recycling to them to make it easier for them? I mean, we, we started to talk about this already, but maybe you want to go a bit more into that. And then there was another comment about like um, that some reclaimers um, they um, reclaim or they collect specific materials and not all materials. So maybe this could also be elaborated a bit more, like what kind of materials is collected by whom and how, how can that be separated? Um, so there's, um, there's um, a comment by Kira Crow peterson who says, doing things like separating recyclables from our main waste in clear plastic bags and making care to remove tissues or other potentially contaminating ways. It is a big help talking to the reclaimers in your area and asking them what materials they look for. Build a relationship with them and ask them what time they normally come to pick up the recyclables. This is a comment. Maybe you would like to refer to that and comment to that. Maybe there's something to add on as well. Thank you. Luyanda, could you pick that up for us? So reclaimers come into the, into the neighborhoods. Um, you know, 
Some seem to be collecting a range of materials. Some only collect particular materials. Can you um, explain to us sort of more around how that works and whether our all need to be recyclable in one bag is, is sufficient or should we be doing more? Um, well, well, what we collect depends on what, what, is, what, 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 what has value on the market um, and what we can be able to carry with our bodies. For an example, our bottles are very heavy. They have value, but they're very heavy. I would not pull bottles in any way. Um, 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 but as I said, they've got value. Paper is very light um, and has a very, very large, very big value, the white paper compared to the colored paper. So it depends on, on, on location. If I'm traveling from Newtown to go to Rosebank, I'm not going to be collecting bottles. It's going to be heavy for me to come back. Which is why Arrow came with other concepts of saying, let's find ways of supporting reclaimers to be able to collect those bottles and not leave them behind. Um, uh, the price of oil. We, trust me, we do understand that the price of oil has a very big influence on the materials that we collect. Um, most of the plastic right now is not collectible, is, 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 is not sellable. So it's difficult for reclaimers to collect. The ones that are able to collect are the ones that are able to store. Um, if you do have storage spaces, uh, you are able to collect that materials. But if you do not have storage places that you're going to, um, um, for example, the guys that I'm with here, are able to store materials for close to a month or two. Uh, but there's guys that don't have storage spaces, which means that whatever they're collecting on that day, they're going to have to go and sell on that immediate day. Uh, we've got a lot of suggestions and a lot of pilots that want to, to be able to help that. Um, we've, we've had suggestions of using the garden size that each and every neighborhood has so that the claimers can be able to move as much materials as possible to a nearby space, wherever that neighborhood is, and be able to store the materials and maybe sell them over a certain time, period of time, not just to keep them for a long time. But that, would, that is how we can be able to integrate uh, um, everyone. That, that we need municipalities to help us with things like that. You know, residents can be able to go through uh, um, the, the support structure to a certain point. They can separate the materials, but they can't help with the problem of land. That is why we need to, be, we, we, we need to have a fully integrated system to make this thing work. Sure, sure. Melanie, has the city looked at um, additional sites for storage or other facilities that might assist reclaimers? I'm thinking about washing points and water points in, in neighbourhoods, um, at, at the use of our public space in, in more productive ways to, to assist reclaimers? Um, before I answer that, can I just make a comment on some of the questions and comments that have come in? Because um, I want to emphasize again that reclaimers have been helping us for all of these years. So in fact, we have been their charity case. They have been very benevolent in helping us to deal with our recyclables and our waste. And it's really important that we shift that mindset so that we're not talking about how can residents help reclaimers. It's about how can residents work together with reclaimers to improve the system that reclaimers have created? How do residents start to take responsibility for their role? That's really what this is about. And I think if there's one thing we can get out of this discussion tonight, if we can shift that and people can understand the reality of the relationship and that it's the, the inverse of what we think, then I think we'll, we'll be able to go, to go very far. And um, that uh, when someone was talking about what can individuals do, I think, the most important thing, thing individuals can do is stop acting and thinking as an individual and create a collective. So you need to go out and meet with your neighbors and organize in your neighborhood so that you can then meet with Arrow as an organization or if you're in a different city, meet with the reclaimers. This is a collective process and it's not just about collecting recyclables. It's about transforming the very nature of the urban fabric and it is about transforming the economy. And we can, we can um, as residents, do, do that together uh, with reclaimers. So coming, coming to your question about the city and what it's looking at, um, I know that the city have, some of the city officials, I think, have been going and looking at sites, um, but unfortunately, there's no engagement with Arrow and organized reclaimers around how that's being done. 
Several years ago, there was a task team created um, by the then MD of Pick It Up, where uh, the municipality and Pick It Up were meeting with organized reclaimers, and they were making fantastic progress on doing things together so that reclaimers could inform the policy and programs. And unfortunately, that was uh, disbanded or, or it hasn't been meeting. I hear Luanda will tell us it might be starting to meet again soon. Um, but the key is people who aren't reclaimers cannot identify what's the right place to have a storage station or what's the right place to have a hand wash station. So hopefully uh, that those processes will be revitalized. Okay, I've been sent a question, which is somebody saying, um, what about advertising on, um, on the re recyclers' bags as a way to, to raise additional income? Is that something that's been thought about or is it? <laughs> well, I think, I think you know, Leander's dropped out. I think he's much better placed to talk about that. But again, let's think about that. That's saying we want to use you, right, to market our company or our good. And I think companies often want to do that because they think it would be cheap. And, you know, reclaimers move all over the city. They're highly visible. So, you know, if any company wanted to do that, then I think their starting point would have to be paying commercial advertising rates, right? And, um, and I'm not certain that that would be something reclaimers would want or be interested in because they're not there to advertise other people. They are there to do their work. Um, but again, it's all this thing about, Leanda keeps emphasizing the embodied labor that reclaimers perform and we have to value it. Um, and we have to engage reclaimers as the importance crucial central people that they are rather than people we can take advantage of. Okay, while um, others try to call Luyanda to bring him into the conversation, Nadine, do you have more questions? Yes, there's um, a lot going on in the chat. Another question is about space and how to make space uh, for the work of uh, reclaiming. So there's a question, for example, by Pew Bart, who asked if um, reclaimers make use of bicycle lanes and uh, if this, um, if municipalities should open the, the bicycle lanes to reclaimers as well, and if this would be of help. I always thought the cycling lanes should be called recycling lanes. Um, Loyanda, what, what is your response to that? Did you hear the question? Um, yes, 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 I had the question. Um, I think one of one of the, the, the advantages of Brixton and Auckland Park is that there's bicycle lanes, and we really, really, really enjoy them. Um, if, if if you were to ask a lot of reclaimers now what they would need if you were to offer them an option of bicycle lanes, the first thing they would tell you is that it would take another ten years for bicycle lanes to be installed throughout the whole of Johannesburg. Um, so it would be a big no. Um, it, the first thing that the claimers would talk about when you're talking about transport is access to materials through proper transportation. Um, we, we, one of the things that we're piloting with Arrow is, is centralizing resources. We've got a truck that we're hiring out, able to support close to 40 to 50 reclaimers a week by supplying them with materials, supplying them with resources of being, move, being able to move from one location to another. Instead of collecting one full bag of recyclables, you're able to go and collect three or four bags of recyclables because now you've got logistics. Those bottles that you couldn't collect that were too heavy, now you're collecting more of them because you've got logistics. So instead of supplying one cooperative with one truck that is only going to benefit one person, centralizing resources and getting people to come and use those resources without choosing Whoever, whoever is able to, without choosing who's supposed to be using them, and just letting the people that are working to come and use the resources, that would 100% increase as much recycling rates as what you want to increase. That's a great and such an obvious solution is to is you know having having a truck moving around so that you can move the stuff onto the truck and 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 you know move it elsewhere and out of the neighbourhood. It doesn't, you know, so our, our sort of first thought about, oh, where can we create land for people to, to separate um, within spaces is not, is not the, only, the only way to do this. Um, Nadine, any other questions? 
Yes, another question relates to uh, what is actually happening with the waste and the perception that reclaimers contribute to pollution by washing and sorting the waste they collect next to rivers and streams. How can we change this perception? And if it's the case, how do residents help minimize this in any way? So also a question related to the perception of, of reclaimers as exactly a form of pollution instead of um, something that um, decreases pollution. Maybe a comment to that as well. And, and was there something on the, the supply chain, Nadine, did you say, on the process? Um, so it's more about the, 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 how can we change the perception that, um, right, the perception. that okay. reclaiming is contributing to pollution. Melanie, would you like to, to comment on that? Sure. Well, I think that you know, residents, this is where we need to have this broader understanding and to see this as a holistic system. Because all we focus on is, oh, they're making a mess. Why are they making a mess? They're making a mess because we didn't separate our materials and so they have to, and because they haven't been provided with sorting stations and sorting spaces and washing stations, etc. So the problem starts with the municipality and the industry that has not been providing reclaimers with the infrastructure that they need to perform this remarkable service that they have been providing for, for so many years. And I think there's a really exciting case, and I hope Leanda comes back to join us because I'm not remembering the name of the area, but I think there's one particular part of Johannesburg where residents have been com complaining that reclaimers are living by the river and they're polluting and they're making a mess. And so over the past four Sundays, uh, representatives from Arrow, reclaimers from Arrow have been working with members of the community and they've done the most remarkable cleanup campaign. And now the reclaimers feel safe that they can move further away from the river because they know they're accepted more in the community and they are, don't, aren't stigmatized so they have to hide by the river. So Leanda, I don't know if you hear, uh, I'm talking about the Sunday cleanup campaigns, but I think for me, it's been remarkable because it's completely shifted so that community organizations that were fighting to evict reclaimers are now working with them and supporting them. But Leanda, I don't know if you want to add something about, about that campaign, which I think is really wonderful. Um, yeah, yes, the, the, the campaign on the Yosuke River has, 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 has really changed some perceptions and uh, had, we've seen a, a 360 degree change on how people should look at claimers. And when we, when we start putting engagements, when you're putting residents associations and claimers together, um, some reclaimers were supposed to be evicted, and immediately you start doing cleaning campaigns, you start explaining to the reclaimers the problems that residents have, and you start explaining to residents the problems that reclaimers have, and you only find out that we, we, we're literally rowing the same boat, but just in different directions. That is why we're moving around in circles. Um, last week, Sunday, we moved out three tons of recyclables outside of a river, and we moved them to a different site, and reclaimers removed recyclable materials from there. Three bags of recyclables were actually retrieved out of the river and people made money out of it. And it, it's helping the environment, it's creating relationships with, with residents and it's making lives for reclaimers actually much better and making our work, our work more, more, more reasonable. Well, that's, that's, Thank that's you. Outcome. Nadine, any more questions? Yes, indeed. Um, so thank you very much on that. There's a, a um, question also, um, a very detailed question about um, do reclaimers collect materials to make eco bricks? So um, yeah, also the question about how, how can uh, maybe um, the material become part of a circular economy, maybe probably in this is one question by Yvonne Shapiro. And then another comment by Maura Campbell, who was also referring to um, the um, community action networks that are at the moment um, yeah, being formed in, in very many um, suburbs in Johannesburg and that could be one um, potential uh, form of collaboration with them. Um, maybe you can comment on that as well while I'm uh, scrolling through all these comments and look if there are, there are further questions. I'm sure there are. Okay. The um, can you repeat for me the first question, please? It was about eco bricks, which is this um, form where you put um, 
plastic yes, that's not recyclable use. into these bottles. Um, so as a form of how to how to use recyclable recycling material. If if some collectors work or some reclaimers work um, for for such projects as well or with such projects. Leander. Yes, yes. Um, we are we are very we are very much aware of eco breaks. Um, we 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 the 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 the, 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 the issue here is how do reclaimers find value in things that are not valuable? I'll make an example with with um with the green PET bottle. It doesn't have much value as a clear PET bottle. It would be the perfect bottle to start doing eco bricks for to start uh, circulating the projects of eco bricks. But what value does it really have for reclaimers? Is it just for charity? Is it just to show that we can actually do something with with eco bricks, or is it going to add value? Is it going to include reclaimers in the value chain? Um um we, we want projects. That are, 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 we, are, we are looking for partnerships. We are looking for, for things that we can be able to and grow people out of the poverty that has been striving through the people that are doing a lot of, a lot of this work. Um, there's a lady by the name of Tamsin that we met through the projects that we did in Britain and Ogden Park, who's an artist and is picking up a lot of materials that reclaimers are coming in and, and bringing to her because they have educated each other that I'm able to collect materials that are antique, but I don't know if they are very valuable. Please show me. And you, you'll be shocked on the things that we actually find. We found, we found, uh, I, 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 we found a 1935-year-old soldier gun a couple of weeks back. It's a rare gun, and reclaimers didn't even know that. And it's, it's, those, it's those partnerships that we're looking at of, 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 of an inclusive, secular economy. Okay, thank you, Yonder. Melanie, anything you'd like to add about deepening the role of um, reclaimers in the in the supply chain or around the circular economy? So I think um, in terms of the supply chain, uh, Luyenda has already highlighted that we need to stop thinking on small scale. You know, we need to stop focusing on giving reclaimers better trolleys and providing reclaimers with infrastructure that they can collectivize so that they can actually start producing on their own, um, engaging directly with the, the large recyclers, etc. So I think reclaimers are very ready and able to do this. They just need to be given the support and infrastructure that, it's requ that is required um, so that they don't have to sell to people who pay them low prices and who then make a profit out of doing what reclaimers could do themselves. In terms of the circular economy, um, you know, uh, there is starting to be increasing recognition that the circular economy can't happen without reclaimers because recyclables don't magically move from a house into a, the recycling value chain. And so I think that's important recognition and that needs to come with payment. Um, but I also want to note that uh, for me, the circular economy is still a problem because we need to be moving to a degrowth economy. We cannot continue to consume at these kinds of, of levels that are destroying the environment. And so it's very important that reclaimers, people will say to me, but how can you support reclaimers because we need to get rid of plastics? But the reality is that reclaimers are the people who are playing that crucial role now and they need to be recognized and rewarded and paid for that. And as we move to a degrowth economy, or the narrower version of a circular economy, it's only by recognizing the role they currently play that we can ensure that they are included as people who design the process and decide what the circular or degrowth economy will look like. And that's why it's crucial that they be integrated now as we shift to a degrowth economy. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for commenting also on that. Uh, and actually, we, we will have also further. Uh... Nadine, it's frozen. While we wait for Nadine to, to come back in, could we? We will ask a lot of questions. Thank you so much for that. Um, I want to, yeah, maybe go into, into a different. Um, into a different field a little bit. So there are 
Um, there's a question, for example, by Desiree McLeod, who asked if there are other organizations such as um, the, the reclaimers organizations in other cities, for example, in, Centur in Centurion, and how um, we can get in touch with them. Um, yes, there, 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 there's, 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 a, there's an organization for the name of um, South African Waste Pickers Association. Um, us as Aro are, are organically growing into other uh, Aro, other regions, other municipalities uh, in Twane, uh, in Ipuruleni, uh, we've, we've got members in, in Fuleni municipalities. Um, we, we're trying to, 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 to move uh, um, and, and get the people to understand the importance of recognizing the work that we're doing and, and the communities to recognize that. Um, we want to teach other reclaimers on how to open their own organizations. It doesn't necessarily have to be Arrow. Um, we are the, we're actually the first actually reclaimers that actually started our own organization. Um, we, we cannot do it on our own. We need a lot of support. Um, as much as other reclaimers from rural areas do need support. Um, it, 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 may not, it, it, it may not happen very quickly, but with the work of municipalities, in helping civil societies and organizations to grow and be able to do the ground work on, of organizing and mobilizing work, workers, um, which is something that government really can't do because there's no time for that. Um, so it's very important to let the organization get proper support to be able to get the growth of getting and reaching even other rural areas that uh, um, there's old women that are doing recycling and they're not getting proper recognition on that. You clearly have um, gotten a place or, or forced a place, opened a space for yourself at, 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 at the table, at the table that is rightfully yours because you, you created um, the, the recycling um, methodology that, that the city and its residents need to, need to, to come on, on, on board with. Um, but what would you say would be the, the lessons of, of that process, or the, the, the political process that, that has, has, has brought that recognition, Leander? Um, our, our, our local municipalities have, 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 have a huge role um, uh, um, with, with the support of local uh, our, 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 our municipalities, a process that would normally take five years would literally, would literally take six months. Um, direct support from local municipalities on, on available land and spaces that we have. We don't have to look for anything new. You know, uh, um, with the, the trucks, I mean, we, we, we're seeing municipal trucks at one o'clock in park sitting, parking, doing nothing. If they, if they could just borrow us those trucks for just two days, those, we'll show them how to collect materials. Um, it's, it's actually working firstly with, with, with the resources that are available. We are using the city's resources by storing right now informally. I mean, I was not supposed to say that, but we are. Uh, um, to be able to store materials, to be able to save the environment, to subsidize uh, 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 municipalities. We have to steal land. We have to hide ourselves. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a very difficult situation for reclaimers here. You get JMPD burning people's materials because they'll park their materials in, in, in in a pri in private property, you know, and, and at the same time, industry is saying, let's, just, let's stop burning plastics. But how do we continue doing that if there's no value for plastics? What's going to happen? Because you click, the residents are playing their parts, se separating the materials. The reclaimers are coming and collecting and traveling the long distances. What is industry doing? You know, Unilever came in and put in a top up. There's other industries that are coming in, but each and every person that is using plastic needs to play a role in making a point that the plastic doesn't go to landfill. We've been doing our part for a very long time. What are other people doing about it? Right, and, 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 and I guess the, the, you know, the big lesson is the one that both of you are repeating around not separating this into two systems. If there's an informal system and a formal system or a municipal system and a, and a, and a waste picker system, but that actually it is, it is one system and, and that there's joint responsibility around it, but also that the resources in, in our cities, and particularly the public resources, are resources for all of us, are, are shared resources um, that, that, that need to be deployed. 
to, to mitigate climate change in, in, in the way that you're doing. We're coming to the end of this. We only have three minutes left, but Nadine, is there any pressing question that we could, one sort of last mm. question that we, could, that we could ask? I think, I mean, there are a lot of um, other topics we could go into. There's, for example, the question if technology could help, if, for example, something like an app could help to, to define the routes. Another question goes into the direction of of um, of wet waste like food waste and what can be done with that i think these are these are big topics um i'm i'm sure we 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 could um discuss a lot about them as well what we suggest as from the side of the goethe institute this um this conversation will stay online both on facebook but also we will post it on youtube and um, please, all of you who ha still have questions and who wants to who want to discuss further, please still um, put your comments here, and uh, we would collect them and send them to Luyanda and to Melanie. And maybe you find the time, or there's anything you still would like to comment on in the next days. That would be great. And I think what we can also offer from the side of the Goethe Institute that we put together the most um, important aspects that we were collecting here today and can um, combine them in a kind of like I don't know top top 10 points how to how to support um, the cre reclaimers maybe that could also help and support our audience in, in um, yeah thinking further how we can support you um, our hour is over unfortunately i want to thank all of you very warmly um our speakers here tonight um luyanda melanie and tanya thank you so much i also want to thank uh, british council our partner here and i want to thank all like the the people who were listening to us tonight it has been an amazing audience so sorry that we couldn't uh, answer all your questions but um, it was it was great to see that this um, this theme was interesting for you and um, yeah please follow us with sustainable together we will be back very soon um, with the next conversation and now I would like to give the last words to to Luyanda Melanie what is most important for you tonight to share with us and then back to Tanya as well. Well, maybe I'll go first so that Leanda can have the last word. Um, but I think in terms of the most important political lesson and lesson that I draw from this experience is that um, it's the tremendous power that reclaimers and residents have when they unite to transform their relationships with each other, their relationship with the environment, the way the city functions and, and the type of economy. Uh, that we have and so we don't need to wait uh, we need to continue to pressure industry to pay reclaimers for the service they provide and government as well but we as residents can align ourselves and work in solidarity with reclaimers to bring around the to bring about the change that we seek and i, ho I hope that's something we can all continue to do um, um. Um, yeah, on, on my side, I think it, it, it would be just more on, 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 the, on the social reclaiming side of it. Um, I think what's important is, is the message to say that the next time you see a reclaimer, um, you should remember that, that, that that's probably someone's mother or someone's father who's, who's out there trying to create a living for themselves uh, and, and not do crime. And, and it, it's people that are literally waking up in the morning and finding ways of feeding their families without bothering anyone else. And, 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 and it's about time that we start by recognizing the, the, the person that people, the way I am, recognizing the work that I do, you know, instead of hitting a wood and forcing me to move out of the road, just consider that I'm actually carrying your waste. I would just like to thank um, Dr. Melanie Sampson, Leander Flatrio, Thank you so much to both of you at the end of a long day. Luyanda sitting in the cold so that you could get a good reception for this, for, for this, this session um, and for an incredibly engaged and, and interesting session. Thank you very much. Thank you.